Hey everyone and welcome. I'm Liz with Premier Yarns and let me just click something on my phone here. And I want to say thank you to uh, Michaels for hosting this meeting and thank you to all of you for being here today to crochet with me. Uh, I hope everyone can see me and hear me okay. And if you can't just let me know in the chat. Um, you see, okay, my hands look good. It's There's a message on my phone, but that's fine. So today I'm really excited because we have a really fun project to make this cute little chick. You can see him here. Um, there are a lot of steps to this little guy. They're not hard, but there's just a lot of steps. So I hope I have enough time to get through. I'm gonna to try to get through every single detail with you guys. And this is just something I wanted to show you because this is the same chick with the same exact pattern that you can make in um, a chenille yarn. So if you have, this is the chenille home slim something like this one, if you can see that. Um, if you want something bigger, you can make it in a thicker yarn like chenille home slim, just use a larger hook, but the same pattern. Or if you want something even smaller than this little guy, you can use like an even smaller like thread yarn. This is a worsted weight yarn. This is a bulky weight yarn. And there's also of course, lighter weight yarns. Um, I'm using my four and a half millimeter hook, which is, Oh yeah, sorry, switch the camera. <laughs> I'm going back and forth. Uh, we'll go to this camera so you can see everything closer. This is my four and a half millimeter hook. We want to use a size a little bit smaller. So if you can see my yarn here, which is the um, Craft Smart Value, it's also called, um, you may have a newer label. I can't remember what the new name is, but it's um, the Craft Smart one. And this one recommends a five and a half millimeter hook. It's a worsted weight yarn, but for amigurumi, which is what we're doing, these little toys, you're always going to use a smaller hook. So I used a four and a half millimeter hook and that the reason is so the stitches look closed and tighter together. Um, we're going to need a little bit of this color, which is clay. That's just for the detail. And the main color is butter. Oh, and the pattern should be uh, should have been in your class materials. So I'm going to work straight from the pattern. And it's all on one page. Okay. And I guess that's it. We can get started. But before I jump in with the start of this guy, I want to let you know that I'm doing a couple more classes um, that are sort of the same as this, but with Amigurumi. And I made this little fox. So we're going to do him. Same thing, two different yarns. We're going to do him in about two weeks. And then we're going to do the bunny. And then we're going to do the koala. So all those classes are going up soon on the Michael's website if they're not already up. So if you want to um, join me in any of those, I'm doing all those little guys too. So you have like a nice little collection. Okay, so let's start on our chick. The reason I started with this worsted weight yarn is because it's a little bit easier um, to see your stitches and it's like nice and smooth. So it's a little bit easier to get through. Once you have a little bit more experience, you can use these chenille yarns. They're not hard either, but they do tend to just have a little bit more texture, which could make it um, not, as, not as easy as the smooth yarn. So we're gonna start with a magic ring. And if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat and I'll try to get to whatever questions you have. Oh, I also need some stitch markers and you're just gonna need a yarn needle to sew everything up. I think that's all we need. Okay, so let's start with my, I cannot see my screen. Okay, let's start with a magic ring. This is probably the hardest thing we're gonna do. Uh, but once you get this down, the rest is going to be easier. Okay. So we're going to start with the tail end. Just sort of place it over your palm like this. And then take this part, right? You can hold it with these two fingers. Take this part, wrap it up towards you, and then over to cross it over. Okay. So place it over your palm, the tail end, grab it with the these fingers, wrap it over, 
cross it over. And as you cross it over, just rotate your hand like this. And then I grab this part with my pinky. So now I have like an X. Now I'm gonna take my hook, place it under the outside strand and grab the inside strand or the left strand. And then just pull that on through like that. And then you rotate it. And then you're gonna have to let go of what you had there, but it'll stay. And then you make a chain with this strand. Okay, so that's the first chain of the magic loop. Let me do it one more time, just in case anyone hasn't done this before. So over the palm, wrap it over, grab it with my pinky, and then I go under and over, pull that yarn through, and then I can let go of that part, grab the strand that's attached to the ball, and make a chain. So that's the first chain, okay? So now we're gonna just work single crochet stitches right into, just wanna make sure I don't have any questions. Okay, right into this magic loop. So the magic part about the loop is you can pull this tail end and you can tighten it, okay? So I don't usually tighten it till after I've put my stitches in there. So the pattern says we're gonna start with a magic loop and we are going to work six single crochet into that magic loop. And then we're gonna place the marker and the marker is very, very important. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, and I usually work over this tail, but you don't have to, I, I think you can do it either way. So now that I have my chain one, I'm gonna insert right into that loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through two. And that is my first single crochet. Okay, so I have one single crochet and I need six. So I'm gonna insert right into the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. If you look at it this way, you can see I have three single crochets. Each one of these Vs is a single crochet. So I have one, two, and three. Insert, yarn over, pull through the two loops. Insert, pull through the two loops. Let's count what I have. One, two, three, four, five. I need one more. Okay, pull through the two loops. So now I have five single crochets into this ring. And now you take this tail and just pull that and everything will come together. So you have a, you have no hole in the center at all. Okay, now we are gonna work in continuous rounds. Um, it says place the removable marker in the last single crochet to mark the end of the round and then do not join begin working in continuous rounds so sometimes when you work in the round you join you join with a slip stitch you chain up one and you keep going um, but it leaves a bit of a like a seam so we want to have a sort of a seamless uh, round so we have a nice flat piece that looks kind of like this we want a nice flat circle so we're just gonna work in continuous rounds, but we have to make sure we mark the, where's my marker? We have to make sure that you mark it or you're gonna lose your place, right? So I like to mark mine on the last stitch. You can also mark it on the first stitch. It doesn't matter, it's just a personal preference. So I'm just gonna put that marker right into the last stitch. So I know that that's the last stitch of the round. Okay, now we wanna do for round two, we wanna do two single crochet in each one of these stitches that we made. So we're just gonna go right into it, no joining. So insert my hook under both of those loops, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through too. This is all single crochets. So if you can single crochet, you can do this. Um, well, it's a couple increases and decreases, which are basically, Super easy. 
So, and then into the same stitch, I'm gonna put another single crochet. Okay, so now you have two single crochets in that first stitch. We're increasing here, okay? We're increasing in every stitch. So now, now you wanna put two in here. And now you want two in this one. You want two in each one around. So if you started with six and you put two in each one, of course you can have 12, right? And two in this one. And now, now you're at your last stitch. Even though it's marked, you have to remember to put those two stitches in that stitch. So you have to work the last stitch. You just have to make sure you mark it. Okay, now I'm gonna put this back. Hey, Liz. Yeah. My phone um, we have like all kinds of notifications. So uh, <laughs> if I can- We have a couple. Yeah. We have a couple people wondering if you can reshow um, the. Yeah, I, I honestly I think they want you to start from the beginning if you can. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the first magic loop specifically is what they're asking about. Okay. Yeah, that one's tough. Like I said, um, once you learn that one, it's a breeze from there. But that one is tough. Okay, you have to practice it a few times. So you're gonna go tail over the palm, wrap it around the back and towards you, okay? And then wrap it over so you kind of made a cross. So not like this, like you gotta make a, a cross, okay? So towards you, cross it over. Now you see my cross? And now I'm going to rotate my hand and grab that with my pinky and that's just to hold it in place. Okay, so now I have my cross here and here, I'm gonna go under the first one over the next one. So under, over, pull that one through. And as you pull it through, like give it like a twist, like a rotation. And then you gotta let go of that loop, but it's okay, it's not gonna come apart. Grab your uh, yarn that's connected to the ball. Now hold it, you know, you, you, like, like you hold your yarn. This is how I hold my yarn. So if you're brand, brand new, you just, I do over, under, like that. But you can hold it any way you want. Okay, now I have this loop on the hook and I have my magic ring down here. So I'm just gonna do a yarn over and pull that loop through. And that's a, my first chain. So whenever you do a single crochet, you're gonna start with a chain, okay? And now we're gonna go into, directly into that loop. Let me do it one more time. I'm gonna do it a little faster so you can kind of, it's, it's easier when you do it faster. Over, around towards you, cross it over, rotate your hand, grab that to hold it in place. And then you're gonna go under, over, pull that loop through and rotate your hook so it's like facing up like that. And then you can let go, hold your yarn in place like you're gonna crochet, chain one. And that's it, that's the magic loop. You have your chain one. The chain one is gonna secure it so it's not gonna go anywhere. And now we're gonna put our single crochets. This chain one does not count as anything. It's just to secure it. Now we're gonna put our single crochets directly into that ring. Insert, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through those two. Same thing. Insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through. Insert, yarn over. This is when I yarn over, you're just basically grabbing the yarn over the hook. And the way I do it, the way you're supposed to do it is as you're pulling your um, yarn through, you wanna rotate your hook a little bit so that way that hook part grabs the yarn, okay? So rotate it a bit, pull it through, two loops on the hook, same thing, yarn over, rotate your hook, pull through two. And pull through two, okay, one, two, three, 
four, five, and one more to make six. Now I have six single crochets in my ring. And I'm just going to pull that tail. And it makes it nice and secure. That is round one, if you're looking at the pattern, OK? Once you can do these uh, circles, it's basically just like a bunch of circles, kind of, to make the whole chick, right? Like the wings are circles, the bottom is a circle, and then you work up and then you decrease to the top to make another circle, sort of, sort of. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put my marker and now I'm going to increase in every stitch. That just means work two single crochets when you would normally only work one single crochet. So if you're just working um, evenly, you would just put one stitch in each stitch. But we want to increase, so we're going to put two stitches in each stitch. And they're all single crochets, no other stitch goes. So insert, pull through two, pull through two. So I just put two single crochets in there. I'm going to do the same thing in this next single crochet under the two loops. So it's a little different because first we were working into the magic ring, now we're working into the single crochet. So under the first two loops, make my first single crochet. And now I'm in that same stitch. I don't go over to the next stitch, which is right here. I'm going, I'm going into the same stitch, okay? Because we're because you want to increase. Okay, now, now you put two in that stitch. Now you're gonna put two more in this stitch. So under both loops, make your single crochet, go under the same two loops and make your next single crochet. Two loops, make your first single crochet, go under the same two loops, which is the same stitch, make your next single crochet. And um, so if you're increasing in every stitch, you're gonna end up with 12 because you put two in each stitch. And this is my last stitch. You want two in there, and then you have to make sure you put your marker back, okay? So when you put your marker back, you always put it in the very last stitch you made. So I made two in this one, in this last stitch. So I'm gonna put it in the last that I made of the two. That marks the end of my round. Now we're gonna start on round three, which is the next round. But I know that all these stitches are part of round two because I marked it. So I marked the last one, and then this is the first one of the next round. So when we get to round three, we're gonna increase, uh, we're gonna alternate our increases, okay? And you'll see that for the rest of the pattern, you'll alternate increases. And this is how all Ami Gurumi is done, right? Every You'll see this a thousand times, just make, the circle over and over and over, right? It might end up being different shapes depending on how many even rows or even rounds that you make. Um, but basically, if you're making a, a like a circle, like a, a tube or a, a sphere or like an egg shape, you're always going to start like this, okay? Okay, so now let's alternate our increases. The first single crochet, I'm only going to work one single crochet. So there's one. And now in the next single crochet, you want two, right? So it says single crochet in the next single crochet, and then two single crochet in the next single crochet. And then we're just going to repeat that around, okay? So that looks like single crochet. And in the next one, I'm going to put two. So this is the next one. And two, one and two. Now in the next one, you only want one. And in the next one, you want two. And you just alternate like that all the way around. So two in this single crochet, one in this single crochet, two in this single crochet, one in this single crochet, two in this one, one in this one, 
two. One. And in the last one, which is the marked one, two. So one and two. And put my marker back in there. So I know that that's the last stitch of my round. Okay, so um, now I should have 18 single crochet and the pattern will tell you how many single crochets you have each round. It should always tell you that. Um, if, you are, um, if you have a pattern and you're increasing or you're decreasing in a row or a round, the pattern should always tell you how many stitches you should end up with at the end of that round. If it doesn't, you know, it should. So if you're working even, like if you're just working single crochets in each round, in each stitch, um, then it doesn't have to tell you because the, that number will be the same round after round after round if you're just working even. But if you're increasing or decreasing, the pattern should tell you how many you should have so you know that you increased correctly. So we just did uh, round three and it says I should have 18 single crochet here, okay? So let's count and make sure I have 18 single crochet. And it's always a good idea for you to do that because if you have the wrong amount of single crochet, the, the rest of it's not gonna work. And if you do have the wrong amount, no worries, just pull it back and start over. Okay, so this is the last stitch. For me, it's easy to count from the last stitch because it's marked, so I know that that's the last stitch. So I'll count backwards. So not really backwards, I'm just counting from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and this last one is 18. So I have the right amount of single crochet. So I can move on to round four. Okay, I think you guys are all with me, I'm excited. So now uh, we have round four, it's telling you to single crochet in the next two single crochet, and then two single crochet in the next single crochet, okay? So before we did single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, and now we're gonna do single crochet in the next two and then increase. So that looks like this. I have my next single crochet. I'm gonna make one single crochet in that stitch. And then in the next one, I'm gonna make one single crochet. And now here's where you do your increase. So one and two, okay? And now we're gonna do one and one again. So one single crochet, one single crochet. And now you do your increase, two single crochets. Okay, uh, one single crochet and one single crochet in the next stitch. And now do your increase. So that's one and two. One single crochet, one single crochet, and do your increase, one, two. One, one, and then increase. Sometimes in a pattern, you'll see it, it'll just say increase instead of saying two single crochet. Just people write them a little bit differently, but both ways is correct. So one single crochet and one single crochet and two in this very last one. Notice how I'm always ending on an increase. So that will be like that throughout the pattern. So I have two in there and mark your last stitch. Okay, and now you're gonna notice that it's going to basically continue that way. So you'll have two single crochets and then increase. Then on round five, you're gonna do three single crochets. So single crochet, single crochet, increase and then do that around, and then you should end up with 30. And then on round six, you're gonna do four single crochets. Single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, increase. And it's just gonna go like that. It's, it's you know, it's like a pattern. Um, 
Okay, now remember to read this carefully because after you get to round six, the pattern wants you to do one um, even round. So round seven, you just have to single crochet in each single crochet, no increases. And what that does, let me see if I have a little sample here. Counting my rounds. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so, and this one, I went up to round six, right? And exactly what, what we just said, you're doing three single crochets and then an increase, and then four single crochets and then an increase. And that's gonna take me to round six where we should have 36. Let me see. So if this is round six. You see, I counted. Here's a round one, two, three, four, five. I'm on the sixth round. So with this little piece, I should have 36 single crochets around here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So I have 36 here, so that means I went up to um, round six. And as you can see, it's like a nice flat circle. But at some point, the circle needs to turn into an oval, like an egg shape. If we kept going in this pattern, it would just be a flat circle. Like it would just expand out and be a flat circle because we're increasing evenly, um, like at certain points of the circle. But if you stop doing that, increase is going to start to come up. If you do too many increases, it's going to start to ruffle. So that's how like the piece is going to behave. So for round seven, the pattern wants me to just single crochet in each single crochet around without doing any increases. So let's do that. So one, and I can count here because I'm not doing any increases. So I can count to 36 to make sure I put the right amount of stitches in there. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So you get the idea, right? So I'm just putting one single crochet in each single crochet around. And you can see it's already starting to curl inward because I'm not doing any increases. So the circle, the flat circle is not going to stay a flat circle. It's going to start to curl up and form um, like, you know, it's going to come up. So that's why the pattern wants you to uh, just work an even round here. So you kind of start that upward curve. And then for round eight, you go back to doing some increases just in the same manner that, that you did before. Uh, you increase in the next five, or I'm sorry, you single crochet in the next five, and then you increase. And then in round nine, you do an even round, one single crochet in each single crochet. Round 10, single crochet in the next six, and then increase. By the end of that, you should have 48. So here you see on this round where it just says single crochet in each single crochet around, there's no stitch count. That's because we, that's because you need to have 42. So you know if round eight you had 42, you should have 42 for round nine because you didn't do any increases. You just worked one single crochet um, in each single crochet. And then round 10, we do some increases. So we should end up with 48. And now for rounds 11 through 20, you just work even. So each of those rounds, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, like that, is going to be even, single crochet in each single crochet round. OK, are, we, are you guys all with me? Because I want to show you how to start to decrease, too. So 
I have this little sample that I made. So now you can see what happens. It turns into like a little, almost like a basket. So I started increasing, I had a flat circle, and then I stopped increasing and it just um, worked its way up like this. And now this one um, ends at round 20. So after round 20, we have to start doing some decreases to bring it back up to um, the top and, and close that circle. Close this like open place, okay? So let's, this one I'm done with. It's my ear. Let's start decreasing. And you definitely still need your marker because we are still working in continuous rounds. And on this piece, I'm at the end of round 20. Let's go back to our pattern. Um, oh, okay, so we don't wanna miss this little part. It says thread the starting tail through the tapestry needle and pull it through the center of the magic ring to create the tuft. So see, he's got a little like hair up there. So if you look inside this guy, I have my tail from the magic ring right there. So you wanna grab that at this point. If you do it after it's all closed up, it's gonna be hard to do. So I'm just gonna stick my hook through there, wrap it around so I can grab that tail and pull it through to the outside or the, like the right side of the work. This is the outside, this is the inside. This is the right side, this is the wrong side, okay? So you wanna pull this guy to the right side of your work or the front of your work. And I'm gonna cut it. And I'm just gonna unravel that yarn. So it makes just like his little fuzz, right? So he's got his little fuzz. His little tuft on the top of his head. And you can comb, even comb it out with a comb too and make it more like fluffy. And I put that right there in the pattern because I want you to do it at this point. I don't want you to do it after. Um, this is the easiest point to do it at. So that's where, I, that's where, that's how I put it there in the pattern. Okay, cut that off a little bit. And it was a nice little fuzzy. All right, let's get back to our decreasing. We made the test so we can move on to round 21, which is up here. So for round 21, we wanna do a single crochet in the next six single crochet and then an invisible decrease, okay? Okay. You guys are all with me, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so this part is where we start to get less stitches, we will start to decrease. So I'm just gonna work six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now I want to decrease. And there's a few different ways you can decrease in crochet. This is the, um, the way I usually see it done in amigurumi because it's kind of invisible. You don't really see it. You want like a nice, like transition from your um, stitch count. So here's my V, right? So there's a loop here. That's the front loop. And then there's a loop here. That's the back loop, back loop, front loop. For an invisible decrease, we want to work into only the front loops. So this one and this one, and we're going to take this stitch and this stitch and make it one stitch. So you just wanna insert into that first, the front loop of the first stitch. And then without yarning over, you're gonna insert into the front loop of the next stitch. So now I have three loops on my hook. Then you just wanna yarn over, pull that through both of those loops until you have your two loops and then you can yarn over Pull through two loops to complete your stitch. 
And now, as you can see, you can barely even tell that that was two stitches that I just made one. You can't hardly tell at all. So let's work six more because that's what the pattern tells me. And then we'll do all of these invisible decreases. So you guys get this. Oh no, I cut this. So look, I cut this one. Um, but that's fine if you accidentally cut your yarn. I actually do that a lot. Or if you just run out of your ball, you have to add a new strand. So let's take a new strand because I accidentally cut this guy. And I'm just gonna insert, this is just how to change your yarn, okay? Insert under both of the loops, yarn over, pull through, and now I'm at the, like the second part of my single crochet. Um, instead of completing it, I wanna drop this one that's obviously too short. And I wanna add my yarn from the ball. So this is how you would do it if you are changing color or if you just run out of yarn or if you accidentally cut it. <laughs> So then just place that new strand right onto the hook and pull it through. That completes the stitch. And then later you can- Liz, I have a question for you. Sure. For the single crochet, single cro crochet stitches, does it matter if we yarn over or yarn under? It does. Um, I'll show you that so, so we can kind of get into that a little bit. Um, okay, so so now that I've added my new ball, um, it's a little loose, but that's fine because you're just gonna tug on it a bit to uh, tighten everything up, right? So now I'm just gonna go right into my next single crochet. Sometimes it's easier to tighten it up after you've done another stitch. And there we go. Okay, so now there you go. I added a new ball of yarn so I can continue working. That would be the same as if I was adding a new color. And let me just remember my where I was. So this is the last stitch. I did one, two, three, four, five, six. Invisible decrease. One, two, three. So I have to do three more stitches, okay? So let me show you what happens if we yarn um, under. So like 99% of what you're gonna do in crochet, you have to yarn over. Sometimes in amigurumi, um, people that do lots of amigurumi, they yarn under and that uh, like sort of squishes the stitch down and makes it appear different. So if you wanted to do that, you can. I wouldn't do it for anything other than amigurumi though, because it makes the stitch super, super tight. So if you're doing like a sweater or a hat, you don't want it to be like super like hard and tight. You want it to kind of have some drape to it. But if you want your stitches really, really close together and tight, like I've seen a lot of people do and it, it looks really beautiful, um, you can totally do the yarn under. You just have to be consistent and use it throughout the whole pattern. So like if you want to um, substitute yarn un under for this pattern, you can totally do it. It's gonna be a little bit smaller and you have to do it throughout. You can't like go back and forth. So a yarn under would look like this. So I'm gonna insert my hook. I can't even really remember because I like never do it. Um, so this is a yarn over, right? So my yarn goes over the hook like this. It looks, it, it doesn't look like it, but this yarn is going over the hook. If you yarn under, it's kind of like the hook goes over and the yarn goes underneath and then you pull it through. Um, and then I think, I can't remember if they do it with both steps or with only one step. Like, let's see, I yarned under again. Okay, yeah. So if you look, let me do another one so you can see. So I'm gonna insert yarn under, under, and then yarn under again and pull it through. Yarn under, yarn under again and pull it through. I almost never do this. But if you look really closely at those stitches, you might be able to see, it's kind of hard to see on camera. There's like a strand here and a strand here. With the yarn under, it cross, those two strands cross over basically. That's what happens, it makes like an X. So this strand is going this way and this strand is going that way. Um, 
I think it's probably hard to see on camera, but you might be able to see it's kind of forming an X, whereas my other single crochets are forming just like two strands diagonally uh, next to each other. Okay, that is yarn under. Um, I almost never use it because it's just a little tedious for me, but you can use it for amigurumi. It's the only thing I'd recommend it for and just be consistent and use it throughout the, the pattern. Um, a lot of times I get questions about like, can I use this in a, in a pattern? You can um, modify almost anything that you want in a pattern, you know? You can add different uh, details or you can use, for certain things, you can use different uh, weight yarns, especially for toys, you can always use a different weight yarn. You just have to know when when is like um, like when you can modify and when you can't, you know, and you just have to be consistent with it. But that just like kind of comes with experience, like everything else in life. <laughs> okay, so now I have six single crochets. I'll just leave those yarn yarn unders just for the class. And now we're gonna go back to my invisible decrease, right? So put your hook under the first loop and then put your hook under the next loop of the next stitch. Oh, I should, let me say that better. So put your hook under the first loop of the first stitch and then the front loop of the next stitch. So the front loop of the first stitch and the front loop of the next stitch. And those are the two stitches that you wanna combine. Yarn over, pull through those two loops, yarn over, pull through the two loops on your hook, and that is a decrease, invisible decrease. Now we need six single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we want to decrease. So insert your hook under the front loop, of the first stitch and then immediately under the front loop of the next stitch, yarn over, pull through those two loops and then yarn over, pull through the two loops on your hook to complete the decrease. And then we're gonna do six again. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and invisible decrease. So front loop of the first stitch, front loop of the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let me do that one more time, just so you get that. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, insert my hook under the front loop of the first stitch and then the front loop of the next stitch, yarn over, pull through those two loops, yarn over, pull through the two loops on your hook. So you can't see it yet, but that is going to start um, making the whole piece kind of come together at the top. So you're just gonna do that. Um, and then count your, after you've done your decreases, count your stitches and make sure you have 42. And then for round 22, you're gonna do a similar thing. You're gonna do single crochet in the next five and then decrease. And then for round 23, single crochet in the next four, decrease. And now right here after round 23, it says begin stuffing the body. So at that point, you want to add some stuffing, which I, Got to grab my stuffing. But what I did was at this point you can begin stuffing. If you do it at like round 24 or 25, it's it's this is probably just the easiest part to do it. So, but even on this little piece, so I continue decreasing. So you can see what happened. It's like a little balloon. I can still stuff it at this point. It's just easier if you have a little bit of a more of an open hole to stuff it, okay? So this, let's see what, this is basically, I was just following the pattern and I just did the decreases, okay? So now here I have, this is my last stitch. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18. Okay, so that I have 18 stitches left here. That means I took this piece up to round 25. Um, and then I want to show you how to finish it because it's a little bit hectic once you get all the stuffing in there. So let me just grab the stuffing. Stand by. Forgot to let you guys know that we need stuffing. And this is the loops and threads. Um, I use this one a lot and you don't need a lot. A lot comes in a bag and you really only need a little bit. And there's usually like a stick in here too that helps you, it's just like a wooden stick that helps you kind of shove it in there. So just grab some pieces. See if I can see my stick. Buried in there somewhere. Probably have one here. Ah, it's this. It comes with one of these little sticks to kind of shove it in there. So at this point, like I said, you want your hole a little bit bigger when you start stuffing. That's why I put it there in the pattern after round 23. But I kind of wanted to be able to show you this on camera. So I'm going to put little pieces in there. This part is actually hard for me. It's hard for me to get it to like not be lumpy. <laughs> um, so just a matter of playing around with it to not stuff it too much and not stuff it too little. And one time I had this bright idea that I was like, I'm going to try to um, use like leftover scrap yarn and stuff or like yarn that I was throwing away. Oh, I can stuff it with that yarn and then it'll be, um, you know, like not wasteful, <laughs> but it didn't really work out. <laughs> it was just like really heavy. It made it like really heavy and it just wasn't, um, and it was difficult to go in and like sew the details on afterwards. So I don't know about that bright idea. It's probably not the best, but I guess you could give it a try maybe with some lighter yarn. So here's my little stuffing. See how it looks just like very lumpy and weird. You just have to play with it, with the stick. That's why the stick comes in handy. Play with it and shape it to what you want it to shape like, right? So I want this guy to look like a stick or a, a chick. He look, looks a little bit like a strawberry almost. So I'll just play around with your stuffing. Probably I could use more at this point to shape it better. Let's put a little bit more in so you can see how it becomes a little bit difficult to close the to close it up, but I want to show you how to close it up. Okay, let's say I have it all stuffed up the way I want it. I buried my yarn in there. Okay, there we go. Let's say I have it stuffed and shaped the way I want it. Make sure you have the shape how you want it before you close it up, of course. Um, this is not how I would want it, but you get the idea. So now I need to close this hole. Um, we were at here, right? So we have 18. So now I'm gonna single crochet in the next single crochet and then do an invisible decrease. So same way we did it before, it's just a little bit harder because you're Everything's like tighter. And so I'm going to single crochet. And the next, I'm doing one single crochet in the next one. And then invisible decrease. 
So front loop, front loop, pull through, pull through two. Single crochet and invisible decrease. Single crochet and invisible decrease. So you just kind of have to hold everything together. Single crochet and invisible decrease. Single. And now my invisible decrease in the last two stitches. So front loop, front loop, and decrease. Okay, now I have to do one more round, which is, Okay, so then I said finish stuffing. So like I said, at this point, it should be shaped how you want it because now we're going to close it with uh, round 27, which is invisible decrease around. So if I have 12 here, I should end up with six because I'm going to decrease every stitch here. Decrease. It's like just kind of about managing everything because you're working with all of this. So yeah, that's two. Decrease, decrease, decrease. And you have to like kind of pull everything. Decrease. Decrease. And you can count too because the stitches are hard to see when everything's being like pulled like this. So if you can't figure out just count and make sure, okay, I need six. And decrease. Okay, and it's not gonna close up completely, but as you can see, it's closed up pretty, pretty much. And then at this point, I'm just gonna cut that, leave, leave kind of a long piece, because we're gonna seam that in. And now with this loop, I'm just gonna pull that all the way through. And now I'm gonna um, use the needle to get rid of this little like bump. So we can use this needle. You can try these um, needles. Sometimes I need something sharper, so. And here, you just kind of eyeball it. And you go through these two. And I want it like I want it to be flat, so I just kind of push that piece down. See, I mean it's pretty closed. And then I'm going to go through here and out here, and maybe one more time. And then once it, it looks like it's closed, then I just put it all the way down through the bottom. So I'm gonna go right into the center to try to see what I mean about these plastic ones are hard sometimes to get through everything. Okay, 
And then I'm going to come all the way out somewhere on the bottom, if you can get it through the stuffing. There we go. Somewhere out the bottom. And you can cut that. And just push whatever's left. You can cut it. And then push whatever's left inside there. So going through from the top to the bottom, that just keeps everything a bit more secure. Okay, so now once you have your little body, see this one shaped a bit better. This one shaped really nice too. The shape comes out nice with the chenille yarn. It's very soft. Once you have your body, you're gonna make the wings, which are very simple. Um, what I did for the wings was I just did the first round of the beginning of the pattern, right? So it says for the wings, I'll do the beak, hold on, I'm jumping to the wings. For the wings work rounds one through five of the body. So that means I'm just gonna repeat these five rounds to make a flat circle. And then once I have my flat circle, I'm gonna fold it in half. Keep that tail in there, that's gonna be hidden away. Fold it in half. And then I'm just going to, where do you see? It says seam this together. So what you can do is you can thread the needle and seam it through. But if you want, you can also slip stitch it together. Either way is gonna work perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna slip stitch it. I'm gonna go into the first stitch here to the to one loop, and then I'm gonna go into like the, the, the front loop on the next half. And then I'm just gonna yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop on the hook. So I'm gonna go in one loop of this stitch, one loop of this stitch and slip stitch. So one loop, one loop. These are like the inner loops. And then I'm just gonna slip stitch that all the way across. Make like a little taco. And like I said, you can slip stitch like this. Um, you can even probably single crochet it together. You're gonna have a little bit more of a ridge uh, or you can just sew it together with the needle. I like doing slip stitches because it's quicker. So one loop, one loop, one loop, one loop. So I'm basically using like the inner loops of the single crochet. Last one. Okay, now leave a long tail, pull that right through and that's the wing. So that's super easy because you just have to work uh, the same as you did for the body, work the rounds that you did for the body. And those are the wings. So you make two of those. Let's do the, the um, feet really quick. And then we will close it out. So I'm using this color clay for the feet. Make a magic ring. We did that before. Yeah, that over, cross it over, grab that one. I'm going under, over, pull through, and chain one. Uh, into the ring, work six single crochet, kind of like what we did before. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Where are my feet? Two single crochet in each single crochet round. So now you're going to do. We're going to increase here like we did before. 
So this is like the basically the same thing that you that we've been doing for the body and the wings. I just want to show you how to make those little like webbed feet. So two. Two. Remember what I was saying earlier about um, a lot of what you do for amigurumi is the same thing over and over. It's almost always all single crochets. Um, and it's quite often just making circles and spheres and ovals. Okay. So now I have 12 single crochet and it says chain three, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. I just want to show you that real quick. So at this point, we don't really need the marker anymore. So I'm just going to chain up three, one, two, three, and then slip stitch in the um, second chain from the hook. So here's the first chain from the hook, and here's the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch, yeah, so slip stitch. And then single crochet in the next chain. And then slip stitch in the next stitch on round two. So this is the stitch that I want to slip stitch to. So put it right there just to kind of attach that little part. And then we're going to do that two more times. So chain up three, one, two, three. In that second chain, I'm going to make a slip stitch. In that next chain, you make a single crochet and then attach that to the circle with a slip stitch. Slip stitch, single, and attach it to the next single crochet on the circle. And that's it. Really, really simple. Leave a longer tail so you can sew this on. Um, and that's the little foot. So I think that's all the pieces. Oh, besides the beak. So we did the feet. We did the wings. We did the little tuft. Um, the beak is just a half double crochet. Let me show you half double crochet really quick, just in case somebody doesn't know how to do that. So I'm going to do a chain of three. One, two three and then half double crochet in the second chain from the hook this is the second chain you can go in the front or you can go in the back I like to go in the back so first I yarn over then I insert into the second chain yarn over again pull through it now I have three loops on the hook yarn over pull through those three and now we're going to double crochet in this one so yarn over insert Yarn over again. Three loops on the hook, but we want to yarn over, pull through the first two, and then yarn over, pull through the next two, and that's a double crochet. And that's it for the beak. That's totally it. So it makes like a little triangle. And then you just um, weave all this in and seam it on like that. Okay, lastly for the eyes, um, the pattern has you embroider them on. You can embroider them on, but that takes a while and it kind of takes some skill and, and it's even hard for me to do it, but lots of people can do it. So I know it can be done. <laughs> so what I think would be a good idea is um, you can just take some black yarn, like some scrap black yarn, whatever you have lying around, um, as long as it's like the same weight or smaller than the yarn you're using for the main part. And then just make a magic ring, work six single crochet into that ring, and then you have a little circle and you can use uh, do that for the eye. Or if you're really good at embroidering eyes, you can embroider it on too. Um, but just making a little circle with some black uh, scrap yarn would work too. And then you are just going to sew all those pieces on just with the needle and thread, just like you would think. Take the tails, just sew it right in. You can go all the way through the body with your needle if you have a sharp needle go all the way through um, and everything's gonna get kind of tucked into the inside. So you don't have to worry about like threads or anything coming out. So just seam that on 
Um, and that's it. <laughs> so I know we went a little late, guys. Sorry, I went a little late. It was so much to go over. So thank you all for um, staying with me. Thanks for your patience. And remember, if it, I know it's a lot, so you can always go back and watch um, the video again if it was just kind of too fast for you. Um, but I'm so happy that you were here and that you were, were able to get through it with me. And also don't forget in two weeks, I think not next Saturday, but the Saturday after we're doing the little fox. Um, and then in August, we're doing the bunny and the koala. So I hope you all can join me again. And thank you so much. Have a great rest of your weekend.